There are lots of nasty characters lurking in the shadowy corners of the World Wide Web, but none quite as bad as Strong Bad. Greetings, party people and the place to be. I am called Strong Bad. Hand over all your monies in a paper and or plastic bag. You can see Strong Bad's exploits every week online at homestarrunner.com. NPR's John Itzty spoke to the site's creators, brothers Matt and Mike Chapman, and has this report. Like I said, I'm Strong Bad. I've been described as cool, awesome, hot, video games, the hottest, and real, real hot. He may be cool, but it becomes obvious right away that Strong Bad is not as tough as he thinks, especially when you get a good look at him. He does have a scary Mexican wrestler's mask and glowing green eyes. He wears boxing gloves all the time, but his round, shirtless torso and his skinny arms and legs are anything but threatening. Strong Bad and a collection of dorky but somehow endearing characters live in the simple one-dimensional flash animation landscapes of Freedom Country, USA. There's Homestar Runner, the slightly dim high school jock. Oh, hey, yo. Greetings, one and everyone. Welcome to me, Homestar one And there's Marzipan, Homestar's earnest vegetarian girlfriend. Hey, stupid! I bought you this stuff. Oh, I mean, I bought you this veggie bogle. Oh, thanks, Homestar. Oh, he's just adorable. This quirky cartoon universe, visited by a million people each month, is created by the brothers Mike and Matt Chapman in the family basement. Originally, um, we sort of wanted to create the feel of uh, Saturday mornings in the uh, 70s and 80s when we grew up waking up early with a bowl of cereal sitting in front of the TV watching cartoons, which I don't feel like really exists anymore. The website is homestarrunner.com, and uh, it's got a lot of characters, uh, but uh, the one who seems to have taken over is Strong Bad. Strong Bad started out as uh, just the antagonist, and he was kind of uh, two-dimensional in more sense than he's just a drawing. And, you know, everybody likes the bad guy more, usually, anyway. And so uh, then, eventually, we decided to give him his own little feature. It's called Strong Bad Email, where he would we would ask people to send Strong Bad an email, and he would pick a real email from a fan uh, and then answer it. Hey, Strong Bad, I think it's high time you composed a rock opera. You simply owe it to society. What should it be about? That's up to you. Best wishes, Anonymous Contributor. Oh, poor guy. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Contributor, why to name your kid? Uh, a whole email is stemmed from if how well Strong Bad can make fun of the person's name and or grammar in the email initially before he even gets to the subject of it. And so that was kind of the first time when we really started ramping up the site and just being like, okay, there's going to be something new uh, every week, and it was Strong Bad. <laughs> Strong Bad, yeah. Action Cool News, five. Top stories with anchor person Strong Bad. And the brothers do it all themselves, the writing, the animating, the voices. Matt does Strong Bad, and he did most of the talking during our interview. Their creation is among the most popular Flash animation sites on the web. Despite Strong Bad's dominance, the website is named for the amiable but clueless Homestar Runner, who Strong Bad has elbowed aside. He kind of overshadowed poor Homestar Runner, who mm-hmm. is the, uh, the namesake, obviously. And uh, and he's not very pleased about that Homestar Runner. It took him a while to realize it, I think. But now that he does, he's not. Uh, he's pissed. Homestar's going to have a difficult time reclaiming his website because he doesn't have any arms. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He doesn't. He doesn't seem to have any problem with manipulating objects or having a soda or eating a burger, though. So the cartoons have the look of the popular but off-color TV series South Park. The brothers say when they started the website, lots of web animation was raunchy or gross-out humor. They decided to take a different tack, and they've managed to produce a largely G-rated site that's so earnest and goofy, it's cool. Their brand of humor has attracted a very broad audience, from 20 and 30-somethings tired of irony, to kids in elementary school. We were very lucky in that way. When we started off, I think the first group that really caught on was uh, sort of other Flash animators and graphic designers. Um, We were in some... um, you know, computery designy magazines early on, 
and that seemed to be our initial audience. And originally, it didn't seem like there were very many kids, um, even yeah. high school kids. When they would email us, they would seem very embarrassed that they liked it because it was this cartoon, and they thought they were too old, you know, f- to like this cartoon. Yeah, even high school kids would seem like. Yeah, they'd be know, like, "I know I'm you're making 16 this for- years old, and I think this is funny." <laughs> and uh, it seemed like then college kids just started getting it after that. I don't know if the people, the white collar crowd, started telling their younger brothers that were still in college and younger sisters. Uh, but then it seemed like college kids became our big focus. And now, I mean, uh, it seems like more and more we hear from younger and younger kids. Younger kids like 13-year-old Brian Carroll from Silver Spring, Maryland. And these characters are so zany and it's so funny. And it's, it's just random, a lot of the funniness is. I mean, the, the hilarity, the humor. Brian's little brother Danny, who's nine, and his classmate Dana Cook are also fans. In one of Dana's favorite episodes, Strong Bad demonstrates how to draw a dragon. Trogdor is like the dragon that um, Strong Bad makes, and he um, makes a song about him, and um, it's just really funny. The growing audience for this wacky humor spawned a demand from fans for t-shirts and other kitsch. The Brothers Chaps, as their fans call them, obliged, and now the sale of Strong Bad t-shirts and Homestar DVDs supports the website and makes a good living for the Brothers. They refused to take advertising and rebuffed efforts to get them on TV. One of the advantages of doing it the way we do is that, you know, at 7 a.m. we're about to put this thing up and we come, we think of some other joke. It's only going to take us about 10 or 20 minutes to add something else in and animate it real quick, whereas, like, you know, if we were on TV or in some other thing that had this regimented uh, production schedule, we'd never be able to do that. Mike and Matt Chapman aren't interested in TV, but Strong Bad seems to have a talent for radio. Here's how he responded to an email from a fan who wanted advice on becoming a radio host. The first rule of thumb for all radio personalities is to look absolutely nothing like how they sound. So once they got the voice appearance mismatch working, then it all just depends on what kind of radio station they work for. First up is public radio. Smooth and smarmy. You're listening to member-supported public radio. John Itzty, and even though it doesn't sound like it, this is NPR News. Dang old public radio. I never got my tote bag. This just in, Strong Bad is still awesome. You're listening to All Things Considered from NPR News.